This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. We're about to see the market get flooded with electric cars as automakers race to meet stricter emission regulations. But Tesla is warning that we're about to run into a shortage of the key materials needed to make batteries. Tesla's global supply manager for battery metals told an industry conference that we're facing shortages of nickel, copper, and other metals in the long term because of underinvestment in mining in the United States. China currently dominates the supply chain for battery materials. So to take on China, U.S. Senators Lisa Murkowski and Joe Manchin plan to introduce legislation to streamline regulation and permit requirements for mines for lithium, graphite, and other materials needed for batteries for EVs. Speaking of battery electrics, sales shot up 88% in the U.S. market in April compared to a year ago, and almost all the credit goes to Tesla. The Jaguar I-Pace and Audi e-tron are new entries to the segment, but their sales are puny, just a little over a couple of hundred units each. Tesla was up 107%, and that wasn't just because of the Model 3. The Model S was up by double digits, and the X was up 104 percent. Okay, so how are sales of other green vehicles doing? Hybrids were up 34 percent thanks to a strong performance from the Toyota RAV4 and surprise, surprise, the Ford Fusion Hybrid, which is now the second best-selling hybrid in the American market. Yeah, even better than the Prius. The Honda Accord Hybrid and the addition of the Honda Insight also helped drive hybrid sales higher. But sales of plug-in hybrids are abysmal. Sales plummeted nearly 34% last month, with big drops coming from the Chevrolet Bolt and Toyota Prius plug-in. Sure sounds like car buyers who want green cars are gravitating towards regular hybrids or battery electrics. And when you lump all these green cars together, hybrids, plug-ins, and electrics, they hit 4.8% market share in April, which I think is an all-time record. We'll have to watch how this develops as the year progresses, because if they get to 5% market share, I wouldn't call it a tipping point, but I would call it a significant development. FCA reported its first quarter earnings, and they came in a bit below what Wall Street was expecting. FCA sold just over a million vehicles, which was down 14%. Revenue dropped 5%, but its net profit and cash flow plummeted in half. FCA says this was expected, and it's standing firm on its guidance that it will be solidly profitable with decent margins by the end of the year. Sales of the Chevrolet Camaro are up a solid 8% this year, and they could maintain that momentum because Chevy just gave the car a few updates. The SS has a somewhat swoopier front end and headlamps that were first shown on the Camaro Shock Show vehicle at SEMA last year. A new LT1 performance model has been added to the lineup, which is powered by a 455 horsepower V8 engine. It's also the most affordable V8 Camaro with a starting price of $35,000. And then lastly, a new 10-speed automatic transmission is available for the 3.6 liter V6 in LT models, and that should improve fuel efficiency and drivability. The 2020 Camaros go on sale later this fall. Nearly two-thirds of Ford owners do not return to the dealer when their cars need to be fixed. So to try and turn that around, Ford's launching a new service to get customers to go to the dealership to get their vehicle serviced. Called Ford Pass Rewards, which is part of the Ford Pass app, customers who buy or lease a new Ford vehicle receive three complimentary maintenance visits to the dealer, and they can earn points every time they go to the dealer for service. The company's also expanding a pilot program that allows customers to arrange for maintenance at their homes or at their workplace. It's currently in California, but it's expanding to dealers in Texas, Illinois, New Jersey, and Florida, and the company might expand it even further based on those results. And hey, what's going on with sales of European premium and luxury cars? They really took it on the chin last month, 
dropping 9%, falling far faster than the rest of the market. Audi, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche fell even faster than that. Could this be the Tesla effect? Or is something else going on? I'd like to hear your thoughts, too. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Lincoln is really upping its game when it comes to styling. One of the reasons for that is thanks to breakthroughs in manufacturing that are making it possible to add more expressive design elements. On AutoLine this week, David Woodhouse, the design director of Lincoln, explains how the manufacturing team was able to implement what they call S-curve styling elements located on the side of the new Corsair. Take a look. This is actually the, the deepest draw um, door pressing we've ever achieved. And when I think about it, you know, the whole time we were developing the clay, obviously the, the co-creation, co-functioning of the team, we've always got team members coming in saying, you know, that we need to add this radius or do this to make this work or stampable. And the whole time we were developing this clay, I was expecting the fee stamping guy to, to come around the corner <laughs> no. and say, you've, you've got to pull that section out in 20 mil unless we can't, we can't achieve it. And, and he never did. Wow. And in recent years, I've caught him in the corridor. I'm like, how do we do it? And it was basically through predictive analytics in the stamping that have allowed us to get this deep. Wow. So years ago, there'd always be a little bit of you know, thumb in the air and a little bit of safety uh, dialed into every aspect. Oh. These days, we can get a lot closer to that edge of you know, material stretch breaking. Right. So we can get a lot closer to it to achieve things like the body section on Corsair. And of course, for a deeper dive into that entire discussion, you can watch that show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or find it on our YouTube channel. But that wraps up today's report. It wraps up a whole week of reports, and I hope you join us again next week. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.